And welcome to Upon Further Review. I'm Josh Aubrey. Plenty to get to in this week's show. The Georgia Sun football team finished off their signing day uh, this past Wednesday, bringing their total number to 36. They had two sign on Wednesday for a grand total of 36. They had 15 uh, transfer portal uh, student athletes coming in, as well as 19 in the early signing period. So we'll hear from head coach Clay Helton about uh, the wrapping up of the signing day and the 2023 class. We'll also send you out for some high school basketball as our area teams are getting down to the wire as they prepare for region tournaments, which will begin uh, two weeks from now uh, for the Bullock Academy Gators. The girls remain undefeated and on top in their region. The Portal Panthers remain undefeated and on top in their region. We'll have some highlights from Portal from Statesboro and from Southeast Bullet coming up in just a bit. We'll also head out to Hanner Fieldhouse where the Georgia Southern women were playing this past week. Uh, the Georgia Southern men and women both on two game losing streaks. They're both five and five in Sun Belt play, both looking to rebound uh, Thursday as the men and women both taking on Georgia State. The guys on the road, the women at home, will have some highlights for you from that and also have some area high school student athletes who signed letters of intent as well. All that and more coming up on Upon Further Review. And a reminder before we go to break, hopefully you'll never be in an accident, but if so, please give our friends at the Sullivan Law Firm a call, 912-489-8888, or online at thesullivanlawfirm.com. Cook's Pharmacy, located on Highway 80 East, is family owned and operated by Lynn and Janie McCook, as well as their son, Josh McCook. Serving the Bullitt County area since 2005, McCook's Pharmacy offers fast and friendly service where the customers come first. Vaccinations are available, including shingles, flu, pneumonia, and Tdap. drive through service is available with two drive through windows for your convenience. McCook's Pharmacy offers free local deliveries and new customers are always welcome. Continuing the tradition of our family, caring for your family, McCook's Pharmacy, Highway 80 East. Well, the Georgia Southern Eagle football team have 36 new faces on the team, at least as they open up uh, the spring camp. After spring camp, there'll be some players that will transfer out, some will transfer in, but the uh, 2020 Three class was capped off this past Wednesday as they signed two more high school student athletes. We had a chance to talk with Coach Helton about this year's class. This has become the way of college football, and, and I, like I said earlier, I think really the main job of a head coach, not only being a CEO of a football team and leading a football team, is the roster management part. You, you almost become a general manager uh, with there being you know, young men that go on the free agent market, basically. And so you really look at this as four phases. Uh, you, know, you look at the early December signing period, which really becomes your high school and junior college um, area, where we sign 16 freshmen during that period of time, uh, three junior college players. And then you have your second window, which is that transfer portal window that you're fighting all the way up into the start of school to bring young men in uh, that fit specific needs. Uh, and then you got your February signing period, uh, which is probably those high level recruits that decided not to sign in December uh, to continue their recruitment process. And you look at Keon, uh, you look at Cayman, uh, two recruits that had multiple power five offers that we had to battle all the way up until about 10 30 this morning uh, to, to get finalized um, and then you, you know you get your fourth wave which is really after spring football and that and that's that next portal window opens up and young men have decisions and you have to adapt again so um, it's part of college football and you can either fuss about it or you can adapt as a coach um, you know like I said earlier I just feel if we stick to our blueprint of being able to really be a developmental football team, sign great Georgia high school players as well as the attached states, and then just target the specific needs um, at certain positions uh, within the portal, um, we're going to come up smelling like roses. I really believe that and build a championship football team. 
we had two young men that we had to fight and uh, a lot for, uh, and and that's what you have to do to produce a championship football team is compete. And I'd like to introduce Keon Wallace from Effingham uh, County, right here uh, in the great state of Georgia, a six foot three, two hundred and ten pound athlete that's going to be a tremendous receiver for us, two sport player uh, that uh, has multiple Power Five offers and came this last weekend. Thank God had a great visit. Uh, now. He's a Georgia Southern Eagle. Uh, we also bring in uh, Cayman Mathis, uh, one of the top DBs that we feel in the country uh, out of a tremendous program in, in DeSoto High School in Texas. A great job by Coach Harris uh, as well as uh, Coach Witt uh, to be able to garner that talent. Uh, Cayman came in this past weekend. Again, a kid that had multiple Power Five offers, and we tried to go acquire the best of the best to finish this class out and a tremendous job by our staff getting that done. And the Eagles will get spring practice underway in March. All right, getting on to the sport that's going on currently, the Georgia Southern men's and women's basketball teams both going 0-2 this past week. We'll send you out for some highlights from the women. Georgia Southern hosting Louisiana. We pick things up in the first half, and it's the Eagles... Bombing away from three points, Eden Johnson for three. Then later, Lydia Freeman corrals this one and puts in two. But the Raging Cajuns with the lead for most of the first half, the three-pointer by Sherry Porter. The Eagles answer with some nice post moves here as Taya Gibson drives in and gets this one to go. Next, on the break, Janiah Love Hill penetrates and hits for two. The Eagles down, but trying to stay within striking distance. The layup by Simone James, but Louisiana too much on this night. Marie Stewart with the jumper, and the Cajuns win 68-58. to As we mentioned, the women and the men both taking on Georgia State on Thursday. The guys on the road, the women at home, and then they'll both be back in action on Saturday. The women on the uh, at home and the men once again on the road. All right, high school action coming up next. Wildflower Farms, located on Old Register Road in Statesboro, is a unique rental property for those visiting the Statesboro area. Located on a beautiful six acres just off the beaten path, Wildflower Farms has four bedrooms, including a game room and full kitchen, as well as an outdoor fire pit, and comfortably sleeps eight to ten people. And for those who may be in town for a show or rodeo at the Ag Center, a horse B&B is coming soon with six stalls and plenty of room to run in the adjacent pasture. Also available for events as well, you can book through Airbnb or call 912-536-7787 for more information. school basketball teams getting set for their region tournaments which will begin in a couple of weeks they've still got a few games left we'll send you out for some highlights from some games at southeast bullock statesboro high and over at portal southeast bullock hosting burke county the region matchup ladies first the bears with a big lead on the break malaya jones Goes in for the layup. Southeast tries to come back. Corinne Talkington fakes and then hits the three-pointer before the 35-second buzzer. Later, Alex Odom will find a way to get this one to go. And then it's Ansley Littles coming through with the baseline jumper. The youngsters getting in on the action as Chloe Cochran hits this one. But Burke County proves to be too much. Hitting from inside and out, and they'd go on to win this one by a final score of 60-44. to 44. To the boys game we go, and the Jackets in need of a region victory. Burke County pulling out to a big lead early on. Kente grounds inside for two. Southeast tries to come back. Brandon O'Dowd hits the three. Then off the miss, Colin Smith coming through with the rebound and the putback. Later, another miss and another Colin Smith rebound, and he draws the foul as well. Ryan Reed later with the baseline three-pointer. 
And then it's Trey Jones off a nice dish. More from Smith off a nice pass. He'd have 22 points. Later, Zach Wells getting free inside, putting in two. And finally, on the break to Smith, the hoop in one. Southeast wins 77 66. The Portal Panthers hosting Savannah Classical in a boys only contest Tuesday night. We pick things up in the first quarter and Marion Trimble with a long three ball. Then it's Joseph Thomas pulling up. He misses, but Chandler Grooms there for the rebound and putback. Amir Jackson, the dunk, he'd only need six points to reach 1,000, and he'd reach it in just a moment. Elijah Coleman for three, and then on the break, Coleman going in for the easy two. And then it's Coleman spotting up, knocking down the baseline jumper. And then it was from just across half court, the alley-oop to Jackson, his 1,000th point. He joins teammates Joseph Thomas right here. Bang from long range. And Elijah Coleman, all three with 1,000 points in their career. Here's Coleman, the alley-oop from Trimble. Portal up 21-4. to four. Jackson, another dunk. Portal turning it on. Everybody hitting the open man. Trimble underneath for the slam. And then it's Jackson driving through traffic. Coleman buries another three. Inside to Tucker Chester for the easy two. And then Thomas. Splash once again from long distance. And Coleman, not quite a dunk. And then it's Thomas. The step back sweet jumper falls. Bryce Clifton comes in and the rainbow three falls. And then it's Jackson spotting Clifton on the other side. He rings up another three. Thomas then on the break, and it's Coleman catching fire. He hits another three. Chester just inside the three-point stripe. Then Clifton driving the hoop and the foul. Portal up 55 to 15 at the half, second half. The reserves getting some fun. They go inside to Rashawn Jones for a couple of baskets and then off the miss, Rico Hagens gets two. And finally, it's Chester for two more. Portal rolls 90 to 30. Senior night at Statesboro High, the Blue Devils hosting Swainsboro. This one, all Blue Devils. Pick things up early on. Raya Johnson gets this one to fall. Later, the nice look inside to Lindsey Johnson. More from the Blue Devils. Johnson, the nice dish inside to senior Ashari Washington. And then Alyssa Staten starts to heat up. She'd go inside, hit a couple buckets. And Statesboro goes on to win this one by a score of 52 to 35. The seniors recognized between the games. Junior Cam Michael being recognized by Georgia head coach Kirby Smart, who was on hand to watch the Blue Devils in Swainsboro. And Michael early on with the bucket inside. Another person smart looking at Swainsboro's DeMello Jones going in for the dunk. The Statesboro right back. Off the miss, James Flag with the put back. Flag with a big game. He'd have 20 points. If you give him the 12-footer, he'd stand there and pop it. A little bit later, it's Flag, the one-handed hook shot, and then inside off the inbounds, Flag with two more. Statesboro up by six. Cam Michael then buries the three-pointer, and then inside, Flag off the mark, but a nice rebound and put back by 
Nick Murray. And then Flag driving in, getting two more to fall. Statesboro up by seven at the half, second half. Cam Michael blows past the defense for the bucket. And then senior Leslie Black gets a few buckets in the paint. Here he'll fight his way up. Two more. And Statesboro wins 62-50. to And among the teams back home this week, uh, Southeast Bullock and Bullock Academy both home Friday night. Bullock Academy hosting Pinewood. And then uh, Saturday, uh, Portal in action. Portal also home on Friday night and Saturday as well with the uh, girls getting things underway Saturday at 3.30 at home. Uh, We also have a couple of high school student athletes, football players that were signing official letters of intent on Wednesday. They'll send you out to Statesboro High for Tyrell Hughes and over to Southeast Bullock for Colin Jackson. My decision was um, Anderson University. Um, I went on a visit recently and um, when I got there it felt like home. It had um, the major that I wanted to study there and plus they're starting um, a new program there um, with great coaches and you know it just all felt like a big family which greatly impacted my decision. It's just a, a new program and um, the position that I'll be playing is um, defensive tackle. Uh, I'm feeling really good. Uh, Shorter just felt like home. Like It was really small like Southeast Bullock. They gave me an opportunity to go get a higher education and still play the game that I love. Um, it just really felt like home and it's not too far away so I mean, I love it, so go Hawks. They mainly want me to play at the tight end position, but at the end of the day, I'm a football player, and I'll play whatever they need me to play. And that'll wrap things up for now. We thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.